Virtual instruments or MIDI tracks here in GarageBand are fantastic. They give you the ability to play an instrument you wouldn't otherwise be able to play, but they do lack some of the features and benefits of our audio recorder track. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can take a MIDI track, turn it into an audio recorder track to help us get the best possible sound. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. So in this one, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this track here, this is our bass track that has just been recorded using the autoplay feature. So we've just used our virtual bass here, we've come into autoplay at the top here, we've dialed it into autoplay two and that is what we've recorded at the moment. It sounds like this. So not a bad sound, but a very generic sound. If you've used GarageBand for any length of time, you've heard that before, it's our Liverpool bass. It sounds pretty boring and dull. So we're gonna do something in this video that can spice it up. Oh, and before we dive in, you do of course have control here by going to your mixer icon and actually going into your plugins and EQ, and you can hit edit, and you can add in different effects and different plugins here. But this doesn't give you access to a lot of the cool presets that we have in our audio recorder, as well as our amp simulators, and they're the two things that I'm going to show you how to do in this video. So the first thing that we're going to do here is actually duplicate this bass track. We're going to tap and we're going to go duplicate and then we're going to tap and drag around this first track, all of the different audio parts, tap in the middle there, tap again, tap copy, and then you guessed it, we're going to paste a copy of all of this audio down in the next track. We just need to zoom in so we can line it up on the right spot, go to there, tap, hit paste, and there we go. So we've now got two complete copies of this track. And this is because as soon as we turn this into an audio recorder track, we're gonna lose all of that MIDI note information. So we're gonna leave a backup copy until we're happy that we have the sound that we want. Our next step here is to merge this track into an audio recorder track. So to do that, we're gonna tap right here on the bass icon. We're gonna tap on merge, then we're gonna hit the merge button in the top right corner. So what this do is duplicate the song. It's gonna merge that track and normalize the volume. So you can see here, here is our audio recorder track. If we just solo this, come back up here and make sure that one's not on. And let's just play back this track now. So it's exactly the same as our original bass track that we had here. It's just been merged into an audio recorder track. So we no longer have the MIDI note information. We now have this as an audio waveform, which gives us a lot more flexibility in terms of what we can now do. Now let's tap and hold and drag our bass track, our original virtual bass track, all the way down here so it sits next to our audio recorder track. And now if we play these both back together, you'll hear, that they are exactly the same. So what is the point? Well, it is that we can now mute this track and we can use this audio recorder track with our presets here in GarageBand to create some unique sounds. So let's dive in and do that now. So to go to our audio recorder presets, we tap on the microphone icon up here near the top left of our screen and we're brought into our microphone options. Now we can change this by tapping in the top left here and tapping on clean. Now on the iPad, this will be right in the middle, it'll be even easier, but if we tap on clean here, you can now see that we can use any of these audio recorder presets. And I have a whole video all about audio recorder presets, which you can check out in the link above and below as well. But we can come in here, we've got all of our drums, our keyboard, our acoustic guitar, our vocals, and even producer effects, as well as our fun and our custom saved presets. So we can now use any of these. So let's just throw on something that might be a bit useful. So let's throw the amped producer effect onto here now, and let's play back this bass and see what it sounds like. And you can see there that we can adjust the gain, the crunch, the delay, and the bass to get the unique sound that we want. Now, this isn't going to be the right sort of sound for this song, but if I was doing some sort of rock song, this gives us a very different and distinct bass sound just by doing this. Now, what we can now do is tap on our mixer icon here in the top left. It'll be in the top right if you're on a smaller iPhone, and then we can come down to plugins and EQ, and we can further enhance all of this. So if we tap on edit here, we can change some of the plugins and EQ, and we can adjust things like our compressor and our track echo that have already been added in for us. So we get complete control, even though we're using a preset, we can then come in and get control over what we're using. 
and you can see here that we have quite a range of different presets just here in the producer effects and you can also use any of your others your vocals your guitars your keyboards and your drums and mix and match those to get the unique sound that you're looking for so that's pretty cool yeah but it doesn't end there let's kick it up another notch we're going to hit our plus button down the bottom here and we're going to add in an amp track if we tap on bass here under our amp sims we can come in and add a bass amp track now if we go back to our track view we can actually grab our audio here and we can shift it down we can tap and hold and shift it or we can copy and paste if we want and let's uh, mute that one and now let's take a listen to this bass track being played through this amp So what we can do now is tap on our amp option up here and we can change the amps, we can scroll through and change these and we can actually even dial in all the different settings. We can turn the compressor on here, we can adjust the EQ over here on the left and the gain and we can even add in stomp boxes by tapping on the stomp box option and adding in any stomp boxes that we want. If you want to learn more about using guitars and stomp boxes and all of the rest of it, I'll link to a video up the top and down in the description. So what I'm looking for in this track is a low sort of round kind of sound. So I'm going to come in here to my clean and let's go the how low amp sim here. We'll go back to our amp by tapping in the top right. I'm going to dial the bass down a little bit and add in a little bit of mids and trebles. And let's just play this back. Yeah, so that's the sort of sound that I'm going for in this track. So let's just dial that up a bit. Let's bring it back into the mix and take a quick listen. And there you go. So let's just quickly compare that to our original bass sound, which sounded like this. And now let's play our new bass track that we've created. And yes, we do need to adjust the gain there because we don't want it to be clipping. I just wanted you to be able to hear that. So we can now come in and tweak that sound. And what you could even do if you wanted to is have both of these and dial in a different amount. So if you wanted the attack that you have here on your MIDI track, but you also wanted a little bit of that extra bass boost or some of that roundness that came in the sound, you can mix these both together and get a sound like that. So very subtle differences here at the moment, but you can see that with all of those different effects that you can add, if you've got a different sort of track, you can really, the, the sky's the limit. And you can do this not only on your bass tracks, you can do it on a piano, on any of your other instruments, your guitars, whatever you like, you can do the same method. Any of your virtual instrument tracks, even your drums, you can turn into an audio recorder track and then use all of these audio presets, all of these amp sims to enhance your sound. And that is going to do it. I hope you found this interesting and can use this method in one of your future projects. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like to check out more of the videos that I referenced in this video, they are linked down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today link in the top right corner or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.